Welcome to Lecture Online. The last two steps for round two are now finding the new process covariance matrix, or I should say the current process covariance matrix, and then get it ready for the next round, round three, where we then realize that the current becomes the previous for round three. For, for round three. Here's the equation. The current process covariance matrix is equal to the identity matrix, ones and zeros minus the Kalman gain, the Kalman gain that we calculated on this round was 0 0.300000 and 0 0.291 multiplied times the matrix required here to keep the proper format which in this case simply will be the identity matrix and then we multiply that times the predicted and here we have the numbers for the predicted process covariance matrix 267.8 0, 0, and 14.8. This then simply becomes 1, 1, 0, 0, minus 0 0.300, 0, 0, 0, 0 0.291, because when you multiply times the identity matrix, you get the same matrix back. So simply 1 minus this and 1 minus that. And then we multiply the times the previous process covariance matrix, or the predicted would be a better way to say it. 0, 14.8. So when we subtract that from that, we get the following matrix. We get 1 minus 0 0.3, which is 0 0.700, 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0, and 1 minus this gives us 0 0.709. Then we multiply that times 267.8, 0, 0, and 14.8. And that will give us the new process covariance matrix, the current one for round two which is then be carried through through round three. Let's see here, this times this plus this times this. 0. 0.7 times 267.8 equals, that gives us 187.5 rounded to one decimal place. 187.5, this will be zero, this will be zero. And here we get, uh, yes, 0. 0.709 times 14.8 and we get 10.5 rounded to one decimal place. This is the new process covariance matrix for the current round to be carried over to the next round. And if we remember right, what was the position covariance matrix, or I should say the state matrix, x sub k was equal to, and then I have to go look that up, 4553.8. Two eighty four point three. We calculated that in the previous video. So now we have the current process covariance matrix. We have the current state matrix with the new most accurate obtainable values for the position and the velocity of the plane that we're tracking, which then will become the previous state and the previous process covariance matrix for round three. So now we're ready to convert that to PK minus one for the next round. And that would be 187.500 0, 0, and 10.5. And then xk minus 1 is equal to 4553.8 and 284.3. It seems like a trivial step, but just to realize that whatever value you obtain for the state matrix and the process covariance matrix in the previous round then gets converted to the next round as being the previous state and the previous process covariance matrix. Now we're all ready for step three, or I should say for round three. We'll do it for one more round. You can see then how the numbers converge to the most accurate values you can obtain. And then we'll graph it out to get a feel, a sense for how well the, the Kalman filter does in a realistic situation like this. That's how we do that, so let's get ready for round three now to see how the numbers progress through the third round.